being able to take a Nerf ball, cut it in half, slap the pocket lab inside of it, rubber band it together, and then kick it and videotape it was extremely powerful. It lets you bring the concepts into the classroom and, and for students to learn about concepts in a way that's really different than reading about them in a book or taking a test on them. For example, uh, one of my students said, oh, I didn't really understand this effect you were talking about in class until I, I saw it at work in a sensor. Probably one of the nicest features, and I'm sure you guys added this because you realized it was going to be tremendous, is the ability to capture videos and graphs uh, at the same time that you're it's being synced with data. Not only does it allow the creativity that you have for you know just going out in the out in the field and doing all kinds of different types of projects, but it does allow the, the physics teacher to be able to creatively do a lot of the classic experiments from physics and to do them very simply. Usually with earthquakes, we use accelerometers to kind of look about how stresses and strains are built up and how they release over time. I can have my IEP students and my exceptionality students and gifted learners challenge with the use of Pocket Lab. So we build in your video tutorials, we link in things right through your website and have student produce amazing work within groups. These girls spent the last two weeks learning computer programming. The select group chose an experiment with Pocket Lab, a physics lab that allows them to expand their coding skills. I thought it was going to be complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. Naomi Franklin is 11 years old and about to go into sixth grade. She already has several career paths in mind. I want to be an engineer because I want to help people with cars and stuff, and um, I want to possibly create the next big thing.